right, so Merry Christmas, guys. So that's one of the very first coils I got from Sky. It's a regular single wound coil. And this is using the JL94 circuit. And look at that puppy go. It's at 12.8. Let me turn it down a little bit. 12.4. That thing is beautifully humming. Solid light. No flickering. Not even any dump on the um, on the neon bulbs. That is freaking gorgeous. Let's turn it down a little bit more. 11.6 volts, 7.7. Still flying. Let's turn it up a little bit. Twelve point five fourteen. That is flying. I better be careful. Let me turn it back down. Cause although I trust that shield, I don't know how much I trust it. But yeah, there's no wobble in that puppy now. Solid light. Yeah, that is gorgeous. Let's take a look at it from the that's why I love those VCR bearings. And I was just playing around in here. I hadn't planned on making a video. Because I was looking at this coil. And I was looking at some of my other coils that I have here. Some I made, some I got from Sky. And I just got my hands on a 450 volt cap. It's not as powerful as these caps, because these caps are 500 farads. This is, uh, I think this is 1,000 microfarads. I'm not really sure. I think that's what it is. But I wanted to use it because it's a 450 volt. I want to charge it up and see what I can do with it. First, I want to charge it using this system, using... The back EMF off of that, running it. Uh, actually, I think it, it should be able to work just the way it is. And then I've got those super cap banks. I still got the maglev. But yeah, that thing is running beautifully. No? Yeah, let's turn it off. So 12.7. Can't believe my wife got me five pounds of... <laughs> 22 gauge wire for Christmas and a drill sharpener and I did it I showed you guys on a short and a um, uh, a bolt nut chart one of the same kind you see inside hardware stores the big long ones that have the holes for the bolts and the studs for the nuts both in metric and imperial That thing will run. It's off now, but that thing will run like that on that VCR bearing for a good five minutes. It's amazing how smooth those bearings are. And so the video doesn't do it justice. All right, let me let me play around a little bit here and set some things up. Because uh, I wasn't really planning on... Man, I really love that coil. I think I'm going to try that coil over here. And again, I've been running this on the JL94 circuit. So I'm going to try the... Um, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to try my newest... Or one of my newest circuits. All right, stay tuned. It's still, it's still winding down. But here's the circuit I want to show you guys in action. I've not used it yet. So we've got a 12 volt in... We've got an LCD display. We have a back EMF here and a back EMF here. This goes to the coil and here's the hall sensor. And this switch switches between back EMF one and back EMF two. I don't know if it turns both on or one or the other, but we'll find out. Couple of diodes here. Um, I don't know what 
what the chips are there. I have not heard of these. I don't think they're, no, they're not of the JL94 ser series. But anyway, yeah, I'm dying to see this thing work. I've not fired it up yet. It has this display. And I'm not sure if the display... Wow, look at that mess down there. I mean, not mess. Look at that beauty. So I think, yeah, if I'm not correct, it measures the back, the, the back EMF voltage off of back emf1 so we got back emf2 back emf1 coil hall sensor and 12 volt in so yeah let me get this puppy set up and we'll see i don't know i think i'm gonna do it first on my newest coil which is a beaut this guy does have a little bit of a flare out but not too bad not as bad as that other one. Oi, oi, oi. Where is that monstrosity? Look at this thing. Oi, oi, oi. Thank God I didn't put any resin on there. I can unwind that. But now I'm spoiled because I've got a giant roll of... I got a five-pound roll of 22-gauge. <laughs> All right. Let me get some things set up here. I'm still got to figure out. I got to clean up this mess though, because this is going to short out one of these days. I'm going to end up like electric boom, zapping myself. Stay tuned. All right, I did something dumb, something really dumb. So when using the JL94 circuit, you can leave your coil loose like this and just put it underneath there and, and everything is fine. But when you're using a hall sensor, the way it charges the coil, it really, yeah, you can't leave anything loose because it charges the coil violently and attracts the magnet. And then when you have the hall sensor right there, it'll get going. But right before, if it's not going, it's sending a lot of current through the system. And I didn't destroy... The circuit. I did get a little puff of the magic blue, but I tried it again and it still worked. So I can't do it in a setup like this because I don't want to destroy it. It was working though. I had just on a little bit, this thing was pumping out 21 volts and then I got the blue smoke. And again, I tested it to make sure it was okay. Um, I am not sure where the blue smoke came from. I think it came from either this diode, because this diode was warm, because it came from right around this, oops, came from right around this area right here. And it is a little dark, but I don't, see anything too wildly bad but yeah i can't do a setup like this with a circuit like or with any jl94 circuit i have to it has to be mounted down using this coil is not a good idea i'll have to use that coil and i'm gonna have to get everything mounted so i can yeah whoo man it was working great, but it was all over the place. It was it was bad. Anyway, let me see if I can't get a regular JL94, I mean, hall sensor circuit set up with this locked down. Because the hall circuit has this thing spinning three times as fast as the JL94. The JL94 will get up to speed over time. But the hall sensor gets going quick. So let me, let me, ay, 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 let me uh, set it up. Stay tuned. I'm thinking I may set it up like this and see how that works. Uh, maybe I'll hook up the JL94 really quick just to see if it's even going to work like that. I th It should. It should. Um, 
Yeah, let me check that out. I was going to put it underneath the same way I had done with the the decoil, but I think I like this setup a little bit better. Uh, let me see if I can't get it a little bit closer. All right. I'll bring you back in a minute. Stay tuned. All right, so this setup I don't think is very good. I mean, I'm it's working, but I can't seem to find a good spot for the hall sensor unless it's also... Let me try pulling the coil back a little bit. No, that's worse. Let me try pushing the coil in a little bit. It's hard to do this one-handed. Hmm. Yeah, this setup is not optimal. Let me try something else. <clears throat> So I tried moving the coil and I tried moving the hall sensor. Let me make sure everything is nice. Whoa, that's getting hot. Let me let me turn it off. Yeah, so the main trans the main um the main chip should not be getting hot at all. This thing is hot is too hot to even touch which means that I'm not getting a good, yeah, I'm not getting a good connection here between the coil, the hall, and the, and the magnetic field. Cause when I, when it's, when it's right, everything runs freaking ice cold and that is too hot to even touch. So, the the timer chip is fine it's the um uh the main chip which i don't even know what that is yeah that got really really hot and i didn't even bother checking it because almost always my hall setups are fine this is no good so i need to run it underneath like this so let me reset it all up. So the great thing about this little setup that I 3D printed, it's very flexible. I can take this piece off and just leave the base here. And then I can mount this guy to it. And then I can slide this in and out as needed. And I can lock this down with these guys. So this thing came out pretty, this thing is working really well. Normally it's up here for the maglev. And so is this base. So let me see, make sure this is cooling down. I think I'm going to use another hall sensor because that one got really hot. I don't, I don't know why. I mean, I do know why. All right, let me... um. Let me fasten this guy down to this so it doesn't bounce around. Stay tuned. Yeah, that's more like it. Oh, that chip is still getting really hot. But that's the way it should run. Getting a lot of back EMF. Oh, that's flying. I think I'm going to shut it down. But yeah, that's how it should work. I don't know why it didn't work when I had the the coil mouth like that. Oh, the chip's not so bad now because it's running properly. Hmm. I got to figure out why it wouldn't run like... I mean, I kind of know why. I wonder if I... 
rearrange the magnets differently. Anyway, that thing is running beautifully. Let's fire it back up again. There it goes. See, in, in, in IRL, it's not pulsing, but on the thing it is. Oh, that's flying. I'm a little nervous here. I'm not 100% sure about that red guard for the magnets. <laughs> but it's working really good. Like I said, using the Hall circuit, um, you get a lot more power, a lot more power. Little Zen moment there. Yeah, the chip's not too bad now. It still should be running a lot cooler. So I'm not really sure why it's doing that. This is an older hall circuit. It's been through a lot. I should pop the new one on there that has the pot so I can make some adjustments. Anyway, I think that's all for today, guys. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Ciao, ciao, ciao.